Hey guys, are you having problems setting up your baitcaster? Have you watched countless YouTube videos that tell you exactly how to set it up, and yet you're still getting backlash after backlash? Hey, just like a brother, I've got your back. Keep watching and I will solve your baitcasting problems, guaranteed. Welcome to Bass Bro TV. Just like a brother, I got your back with all your fishing needs. My name is BJ McVeigh, and today we're setting up the bait caster the right way. But first, I'm going to show you how a bait caster works. Hey, set the hook on that follow button down below and smash that like button if you like what you hear and you want more great fishing videos. Hey guys, all right, so again, I'm going to show you how a bait caster works first, okay? So here's how a bait caster works. This is what a bait caster looks like. This is a low profile bait caster. This is what we'll be setting up today. So when you push down on a bait caster, you're gonna push down that button and this is a free spool. So it is going to spin and that is exactly how it works. The problem is you must use your thumb if you have it freed in order to stop that spool or you're gonna get a backlash which is probably why you're here you're getting too many backlashes and you can't figure out if you're setting it up wrong or if you're setting it up right and just don't know how you, how to do it okay so I'm gonna help you out this will make it a lot easier to learn okay so again a bait caster has um, a free spool but it also has braking systems that help in aiding um, the freeness of the spool. So you got braking systems right here on the side. This is your main braking system. This is what the knob is um, attached usually on the same side as the handle and it's a little knob that puts right up um, with the spool. There's a rod that goes through that spool right in the middle and that's exactly where it attaches to right there. That will press up against that knob or not touch it at all based on how you set it. Okay. Now on this side We've got a magnet. This is for fine tuning your bait caster. If you were to switch baits or if the wind were to pick up and you need to, and you're going to be casting into the wind or you're going to be casting a little bit heavier, lighter bait, then you can adjust this knob by rotating it either clockwise or counterclockwise um, based off of its setting to make it more resistance or less resistance on your spool. Okay. Now, again, there's many different types of bait casters out there. This one is a dual braking system, meaning there's actually brakes inside this. If I touch this and open it, you can see there's brakes on the inside. There's actually six, okay? Um, if you don't have brakes, then this step doesn't apply to you, okay? So we're going to now set up the bait caster the right way, okay? Don't do it the way that the um, people on YouTube tell you to do it. You've probably watched a hundred of them that said, this is how you set a bait caster. This is how you set a bait caster. They've always told you to uh, lower your knob and let the bait fall down to the ground and let the ground stop the spool. Well, here's the problem with that, okay? If you let the ground stop your spool, okay, you're, you add any force to that bait, okay, and it hits the water, this spool is not going to stop unless your thumb stops it. Okay, that's not what you want when you're first learning because you got to learn the muscle memory of stopping with your thumb. Um, so we're trying to help out with that. So the real way to set this up, okay, is letting the bait slow the spool down, not your thumb. Okay, so how we're going to do that, again, if you have a dual braking system, this is where you're going to start. If you don't, you're just going to skip this step. Okay, um, so for those who have dual braking systems, open it up and turn them all on, okay? Based off of whatever you have, find out which way the on is, which way the off is, make sure they're all on, okay? Once they're all on, you are now ready for step number two. If you do not have dual braking systems, this is where you're going to start. 
okay? You're going to tighten this knob all the way down, okay? That way when you press the button, the spool doesn't move, okay? It does not move at all. Now, yes, we are going to slowly loosen this up, okay? How we're gonna slowly loosen up is we're going to loosen up and when the bait starts falling, we're gonna start tightening back up just a tad, all right? When the bait starts to fall, you're going to tighten it back up just until the bait stops falling. Now, this is where we're gonna start. Where you have it at right now, push the button again and see if the bait falls. If it doesn't fall, what I want you to do is start jerking the rod up and down. And if it starts spinning, okay, and the bait starts falling down, then what I want you to do is loosen it up until you can do that and the bait falls down to the ground easily by jigging it, okay? I'm, I'm jigging it down to the ground easily. It falls down super smooth all the way down to the ground. This is what you want to do. So I'm jigging my bait down to the ground and then reeling it back up and jigging it back down. Once you get it there, again, it should easily fall down to the ground when you're jigging it. It should not fall all the way down to the ground. It should fall and jerk down like this as you jerk it down to the ground, okay? If you jig it, if you jig it and it falls all the way down the ground just by you adding that force, then you need to tighten up just a little bit. It should jig all the way down, just like that, all the way down, okay? Now, once you get it there, you can then take your first cast. And do me a favor, on this first cast, don't put your thumb down. I want you to whip it as far as you can and don't put your thumb down, okay? If you get a backlash, just tighten it up a smidge. But if you do get a backlash, I promise you it won't be bad at all. It, matter of fact, you might notice that it only has one curl and not thousands of them. So if you cast it though and you don't get a backlash, which I believe and I strongly guarantee you probably won't. You probably won't. If you make a correct cast, this method works. You will not get a backlash, okay? So now, when you cast it out on this method um, and you uh, feel like you're not getting as much distance as you'd like, then what you wanna do is start loosening this up, okay? Now, I usually start with this all the way tight as well. That's completely up to you. It's not a necessary component. Some people like it in the middle so they can go up or down. I like mine all the way tight. That's completely up to you. Now, if yours is already loose all the way and you're finding that you're not getting as much distance as you'd like, then you need to go back and, and loosen up just one click at a time, just one itty bitty click at a time until you get it to the max amount of distance you can absolutely throw it and then your bait um, stops the spool and not your thumb, okay? Now, it's always good practice to stop the bait with your thumb. Again, this method is to help you get out and fish more and not have to worry so much about bait casting. Now, however, I've been fishing since I was nine. I've been using bait casters since I was 10. I set it up like this every day because I don't need to cast it 50 yards. I, I cast it 30, 30, 35, 40 yards still even setting it this way, I don't need to cast it any more than that. I mean, you'll think you'll find you won't either, okay? And regardless, you can only cast it as far as you physically can, whether it's set tight or not. So um, obviously if you have it so tight, you're not gonna get any distance, but that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're setting it up the loose amount possible that the bait can be thrown and the spool slows down with the weight of the bait. That's it. That's what we want to find. We want to find that spot for this bait, okay? So once you get that that way, again, I want you to take a cast and keep doing it until you get it dialed into that right spot where you can cast as far as you physically can, you're happy with it, and you don't have to put your thumb down because you're not getting backlashes. If you want to uh, keep doing it that way and then slowly, slowly wean yourself off of the braking systems just to where um, you can cast and you have the timing down to put your thumb down, by all means, you're good to go. But again, set it up this way. I promise it will change the way 
um, your fishing days go. Like you will have much more fun on the water. You'll do a lot more fishing and a lot less picking. So do it that way. Check out this video um, of me casting, setting it up exactly the way we just talked about. Check this out. You guys want to see something cool? You don't need to fuck put your thumb down on this reel. I just cast it a mile. It's just like a DC. It's pretty great. Without the annoying noises that I feel is pretty obnoxious hey just like that that is exactly how you want to be able to go out and fish and cast as you can see I was able to launch the bait 30 to 40 yards and I didn't have to put my thumb down neither do you if you set it up exactly the way we just did trust the process do it keep practicing I also recommend that you when you go casting go ahead and eliminate overhead overhand casting don't do that as much as possible try to sidearm cast it basically what you want to do let me get back here you want to be able to sidearm cast it like this sidearm it. all right if you do that you have a lot less room for error um, you can release it late you can release it early and you have a lot wider um, uh, room for error um, that way you don't smack it down into the water and cause it to, to over over spool. Um, I don't care what setting you have it on. If you were to accidentally release the bait too late on an overhand cast, it's going to go straight down the water and you're going to have a backlash. Mindful though, if you set it the way we just did, it won't be as bad. But that's not what we want. We want to try to eliminate everything as much as possible, including the ba uh, backlashes. So again, I just highly recommend sidearm casting until you get the release of the thumb and then also don't forget it's still good practice to put your thumb down but for a while don't do it let the bait stop that will help you understand when you're supposed to put your thumb down the exact same time the school stop is exactly when you want to put your thumb down start start doing that instead and you will become a pro at casting a bait caster thank you guys so much for watching my name is bj mcveigh this is bass bro tv we'll catch you next time